Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ida British Wolf, and today I'll be doing a quick replay episode on Dino Crisis. I say quick, I've actually given myself about 12 minutes to get all the speaking done, but this was originally going to be a 30 minute to 45 minute episode. However, I just can't shake the feeling that that would have been bad, seeing as I didn't really talk all that much, and when I did talk, I may or may not have made a questionable joke that uh, maybe the angered women or had everyone laugh well. I mean, it, it was a little bit of a, um, it was it was kind of a feminist thing that I was going on about because uh, for those of you who've played Dino Crisis, you'll remember that the uh, blonde uh, the blonde lead of your uh, group was called Gale. And there was just a section in uh, what part I played where he ends up you know, taking the key off Regina and turning around going, Right, I'll lead the way, I'll do this, and basically just completely takes over and acts as if she wasn't going to use her initiative to look around for doors that the key fits. And I just went on this big old rant about uh, how, you know, she's, uh, she'll just you know, swoon and stay in, this, in the, in the uh, sidelines because she's a woman. Let Gale do all the manly things while she just sits there and... Well, I can't continue the rest of the joke because, uh, again, I'm not sure whether it would have been offensive or not, but... I like to think it would have been funny and a sort of like, well, he has a point because Regina is supposed to be, uh, you know, an independent woman here. But I just, I don't want to play the card too early, because I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, risk insulting a lot of people there. Otherwise I'll be known as that YouTuber who hates women. <laughs> so yeah, I decided against it. But it was a positive thing, it's like I was being sarcastic about uh, Regina just doing all the side things, and letting Gale be the hero, even though he was clearly just being like a dick. And, um... Anyway, let's get to the actual review because I've ranted for two minutes about uh, a joke I you'll never you'll never see. <laughs> uh, Dino Crisis is made by Capcom and Virgin Media Interactive, which I think Virgin Media Interactive doesn't exist anymore, but I could be wrong. Um, and basically, it's in the same vein as Resident Evil, as it's a survival horror, but instead of zombies, you have giant fucking dinosaurs, which you know, always a lovely thing. Uh, this game was easier and harder in some respects, because it wasn't the same as Resident Evil. Like, you still had to run around, solve puzzles, do this, do that. But, uh, instead of the several endings, like, it, I think Virgin Media Interactive got involved around Resident Evil 2. And that had four endings. So, uh, this one's one less. It has three endings. And, uh, it's actually clever how you get the true, uh, canonical ending. Because you have to uh, do one thing, but then not do it and do another. It was pretty smart. But, um... Let's move on. Yeah. Uh, basically, you play as a squad who goes in to investigate a facility and extract a certain professor who may or may not have faked his death. Uh, he actually has. He's a complete dick. And, uh... It gets interesting in the fact that... You don't get memos in this game. Like in Resident Evil games, you always got memos and, you know, journals and binders to tell you exactly what you want. This one literally was just about your own brain power. If you forgot it, you'd have to go back to that same thing and pick it up again. So it was realistic in that sense. You also had uh, emergency boxes, which was basically your storage chests. Uh, except for they come with equipment to begin with. You had uh, different weaponry, of course. You had different keys. Uh, you had to decipher certain doors by getting the, uh, the letter list first and then the keywords so you could find out like you know if uh, the keywords are X Y uh, the key letters are X Y Z and you've got O P X Y E Z N then it would be open. Uh, there was laser barriers which uh, were both a hindrance and also positive as it would stop. Uh, Raptors and other dinosaurs getting to you if you turn them on because they couldn't walk through them. Neither could you, but yeah. Uh, a, a big improvement, something that disappeared in um, Resident Evil games that you never saw until Resident Evil Outbreak File 2 was that Regina could walk while holding her gun. And she was one of the only characters in a Capcom game at the time to be able to hold a handgun in one hand. Uh, everyone else always did two handed. But yeah, that was an interesting mechanic, so you could carefully stalk down a corridor and not have to run around and rotate like a turret. 
I mean, you still have to rotate if you stop, but the point is, you could walk. Uh, the thing that not many people remember, though, is, uh, firstly, you had resuscitation kits, so if you died, you could actually restart in the same area, uh, at the cost of the kit. And there was actually quick time events, like, I, I remember those, uh, events, and I still don't know how to have done, like, we just mashed the buttons back then. And it was like, a raptor would leap at you and start grappling with you, or a pterodactyl would pick you up and go to drop you in a, uh, like a air conditioner, the, you know, the, uh, sharpened sort of fan sort, not the nice, gentle, blowy sort that most people have. And, uh, yeah, those were, um, those were new. You didn't get those in Resident Evil. You also ended up facing off against the T-Rex, which was essentially like... I'm trying to think of a Resident Evil uh, monster that kills you in one hit. Probably like the Neptunes in water, you know? Like, the T-Rex would instantly kill you. You had to keep running the fuck away and blowing its face off every second, uh, every second you got. Which wasn't easy, because one encounter has you stuck in an office with it, nipping at you constantly. Uh, and the game was interesting. It, 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 was a, it was a unique turn away from the standardized survival horror at the time, so Capcom did outdo themselves with the game. And Regina, even though she disappeared eventually, did actually become uh, slightly famous in the Capcom community. She's no, you know, Jill Valentine, but people still remember her. They don't remember Dylan, or Gail, or... I think his name's Rick? Like, uh, the, uh, the other guy who was tagging along with, um, uh, the crew, the black guy. I, I can't remember his name. Like, I, I didn't even remember Gale's name until he was attacked by a raptor. I kept calling him Rick. So, you know. But, um, it is a decent game. It, it's difficult. It's a lot more difficult than Resident Evil. Resident Evil seems like it's holding your hand compared to this one. And, uh, that's saying something, because old Resident Evil games were confusing as fuck. <laughs> but this one's even worse, in the sense that there's so much to learn in such little time. Uh, there is an easy and a normal mode, there was a dinosaur battle mode, but that could have been in the second one. It did, a, it did spawn a sequel with, uh, Dylan, which, uh, nobody remembers, really. <laughs> they remember Regine, don't remember Dylan. Yeah, and the, uh cliffhanger of that one. And, uh, then, uh, there was actually a third. I think it was, like, Dino Stalker. And that was, um, classified as the third Dino Crisis in the series. As, uh, yeah, certain characters reappeared in that. Uh, Regina has been referenced to in certain media, like, uh, Devil, uh, Devil, uh, Dead Rising. Don't know why I was gonna say Devil May Cry then. Uh, Dead Rising did actually have a costume of her and, like, pterodactyls and machine gun fire and all this and that, because, um, if she's not with a pistol, she's with a machine gun. But, uh, otherwise the game sort of faded into obscurity after the PS1 era. So, you know. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, if you're into survival horror, but don't want the stereotypical shuffling zombie and, ooh, look, a hideous mutant of experiments gone wrong, uh, definitely try this one. There was a sequel, that was a bit more complex. And it's your usual kind of Capcom horror game from the uh, olden age. A painted on 2D background with 3D images. Which works pretty well, because it's uh, it, it's an interesting um, thing, because they... Uh, it's, a lot more, uh, it's a lot more stylized than uh, Resident Evil was. Resident Evil was just a 2D background painted, and then the 3D models could be shifted around in a certain way. While this one has a bit more definition, so, it seems like a 3D environment, even though it's a 2D environment. Well, some of it is 3D, like stairs and doors and certain other things, yeah. But, uh... Yeah, it's, it's definitely worth a look. It's definitely worth a game, and it will eat up a lot of time. But, um... Yeah, if you, uh, if you are a survival horror fan, this is definitely going to interest you. And if you're a Capcom fan, maybe you remember this game. If you do... Do say so. Say what, say what was your favourite part. For me, it was always the uh, dinosaur coming into the office and eating the uh, dead scientist, leaving us trapped at the back. Like, it still makes me fucking panic because of that. Because I still don't know how the hell you get out of it. 
But um, yeah, uh, it's a uh, it's a pretty good game for what it was. It's difficult but good. So this has been Dino Crisis. I've been a British Wolf, and I will see you in the next video. Ta ta for now. Thank <laughs> you.